I've been playing with this model for a while, and there's a fundamental problem with it. It has an enormous amount of front lift. For a while, I was in denial about it. You know, the numbers were bad, but add a splitter and life will go back to normal. Now, however, has come the time when I need to admit I have a problem. Exposing myself to reality and addressing I have a lift problem. Considering the popularity of this make, the amount of aero additions run in competitions, mostly in Europe, I'm a little surprised nobody has approached this issue. When I first modelled this car, it didn't have an engine bay. There was massive spill over the bonnet. I thought, opening up the grille, the problem was going to go away. That was a big fat no. Building an accurate spec radiator, that made things worse. All the effort, really just adding a splitter, so not much, that had gone into creating downforce at the front has just made it neutral. This video, I address this specific area and the obvious reason this model has such severe front lift. Firstly, CFD isn't the real world, but unlike me, everyone else cannot see air, so we need some visual clues. There are three different things I'll show, but this video from this year is the best. We can see the bonnet flexing and lift on the leading edge. Initially it oscillates, suggesting the pressure gradient is unstable when the bodywork flexes. Lift is lowered by rupturing the separation bubble and then reattaching. As the speed increases, the oscillation stops and the bodywork is reconfigured in the hanging on for dear life shape. This person just went a little bit far on their weight saving measures for the bonnet. There is this paper that shows airflow at the front, similar to the model's CFD results. I like how it presents it as the only solution a car will ever have. Then lastly, going back to the Group B rally cars, the Lancia Delta S4 had this additional bodywork around the front, which forms a background to my inspiration I will test. My actual inspiration is to create actual downforce on this model. So how did I get to this position? Starting out, this model had a positive 1 lift to drag ratio, an SCZ of 0.83, 65% of that at the front. Adding the usual front splitter, skirts, and rear spoiler gave a marginal amount of downforce, like an SCZ of negative 0.03. Adding vents in front of the wheels started to see something resembling useful downforce, at an SCZ negative 0.12, but that's just 50% of the easily achievable rear downforce. But if we were to start with neutral lift at the front, we could have an SCZ of negative 0.66 for the front. Now, we won't get all of that, but I suggest there's a whole lot we can find by fixing the very problematic airflow over the leading edge of the bonnet. There are really just two options, cut into the body or extend the body. I tried both. Cutting has an advantage if you have room. Though it requires remodeling the bonnet and refabricating the metal strut needed to be cut away. The result is it increases the total downforce by 20% and reduces drag by 5%, which is nice. However, I'm here for the front downforce. This was increased by 88% to an SCZ of negative 0.198. Front to rear pressure distribution is now 44.5, 55.5. Now the aerodynamic characteristics are fundamentally different. It affects so much of the car, it's basically a different car. Normally at this level of downforce, the gains are mostly linear. Here it has an influence almost everything else. Downstream, visually it's obvious. The Lambda 2 ISO volume, an indication of air rotation, has been removed from the leading edge of the bonnet. There is now some stemming from the high pressure at the base of the front windscreen. The rear wing has almost 5% more downforce, likely exaggerated by the CFD turbulent model used, but it is indicative. Conversely, the rear has a 6% reduction. Discounting the rear wing increase, 
the performance of the body is missing 9%. Plotting under the car illustrates the floor is working better. Therefore, by inference, the upper body is now creating more lift that isn't counted by the extra efficiency of the wing. Easier than refabricating a large amount of the bonnet region is adding an extension over the grill. This gives very similar results, though the numbers suggest it's a tiny bit worse. A little less efficient as indicated directly by the rear wing. Total downforce doesn't change, so all the loss is at the front, with just under 3%. The front SEZ is negative 0.193. However, this method, it can be extended over the lights without adding much complexity. That is, if the lights aren't used. Maybe they can be made clear if that satisfies some sort of rule set. As you can imagine, this builds directly on the previous gains. Reducing drag further, increasing downforce, 8% more, all of it at the front, with 23.5% for an SCZ of negative 0.24. The rear wing is identical, as expected, though the rear lost 4% of course. The front to rear split has finally reached 50-50. Compared to the baseline, the total drag reduction is about 7%. Total downforce is up by a remarkable 30%, giving an overall efficiency gain of 38%. With this improvement, and seeing all the bits added to these hill climb cars, I really think they are missing some easy gains. Anyway, not knowing when to stop, I removed the corner of the bumper that reduced drag and increased lift. But saying that, I was going to need to do this if I wanted to improve the geometry of the corner. <laughs>